Substack contacted me a couple of weeks ago about sending me one of their X7 Pro machines. It's a brand new 10 watt machine for a um, to make a video about and do a review of. So it arrived, and you can see it was really packed well. It, um, I think it made the trip from China. You can see everything, you know, in good shape here. Box wasn't too bad. Um, you know, everything looks really nice. I'm going to just uh, do a quick unpacking here to show you, you know, exactly how it was packed. But um, it did a really good job at, uh, you know, putting it in the box there. And that's what it looks like. Um, it was partially assembled, you can see, and they have their own extrusions. They're similar to the other lasers, but, you know, a little bit different. They made their own, and see their little limit switches on there. <coughs> and um, there's a, a control panel there. I didn't even get to use that, to tell you the truth. And then there's a 10-watt um, laser, and you can see the brand new. It's two 5-watts combined, so it should be similar to the D1. And then it also has a control box and um, comes with all the tools you need for assembling it. See, they give you ball headed wrench, ball Allen wrenches there, and um, all the hardware is packaged and you know it matches the assembly book. And they did give a, a wonderful assembly book on it. So I'm just going to walk you through the assembly a little bit here. Um, and basically, it's like all the other lasers, you just have to um, assemble the four main pieces and they all fit together nice and you know everything was drilled and tapped nice so that wasn't too bad and I started putting the first two pieces on like that and then I had to flip it over because it had a limit switch sticking down to put the rest on and tighten it up on a flat surface here so it's nice and flat and then you slide the X carriage on and then next you have to um the, the control box here that's got the PC card and you know all the switches in it. It's got an EMO button on it, you can see. So, you know, it does have some nice quality hardware, and then there's three more feet that go on to it. <coughs> and then, then you have to go back and put the belts on, and same as you know, basically any 3D printer or anything like that. You just wrap it up around the drive pulley there and then drive, feed it back under the pulleys. And then you um, just kind of slide that all the way to the front there. And then they use a screw to tension it. Now, I really don't like what they did here because they put the screw in, you get a little nut, you turn sideways. And then the tip of the screw hits the belt. But the minute you start to tighten it, it twists the belt. And uh, tries to pull it sideways and stuff, so you can't, really can't tighten it that tight. But um, you know, it should have been some kind of a plate on it to stop it from doing that. And then, according to the instructions, you have to move the laser mount down. So you know, that's pretty easy to to move down. And um, just two screws. And then the laser goes in place. You can kind of see it's got a nice adjustment on it. And then the wheels were loose. Everything was rocking. So I had to go back and tighten the wheels up a little bit with the concentric. And the control panel just sticks on the front with magnets. And then finally you do the cabling. And, uh, you know, the cables up here just plugged right in. They were pretty easy. And then when I got to the other, the other end... Um, Looked like it, the picture showed like they were supposed to go around the back side, but I, I couldn't really get them in there from the back side. It looked like the cable was going to be too short, so maybe I was looking at it wrong, and I just um, put it in around the, my fiddle with it for a while. But it would have been nice if they had that connector sideways, so it was easy to access. But um, I couldn't get it in, so I just went around the front there and plugged that in first, and then plugged the was able to get it from the front. Then I had a problem that I couldn't get full travel with that cable because they had that other one coming out for the limit switch a little too far back. So I had to cut that out and put some tape around it and pull that wire forward. And, you know, finally I was able to get everything in there and um, properly so that they'd work properly and, you know, go to all the ends of the limits. Then they put the plugs on the control box and I don't know why they put them facing up because, you know, that's right in the way up 
going up like that. But that's where they put them. And then this panel here, um, they give you a panel to work on so you don't burn your bench. And it does come with a uh, some kind of protective coating that you have to peel off. And it's kind of like trying to peel duct tape off something. So that takes a little while to get it cleaned out. So then I plugged it into the computer and started up light burn. And um, it, I played with it for a while. I had some big problems with it. It just kept shutting itself down from the sense gyro sensor in the top there. I had to keep loosening wheels and belts until it would run without shutting down. And I'm just doing a test piece here to you know see, make sure that it looks like it'll run before I move it over here. And I'm putting it in my enclosure and. You can see how high this thing is. It's really high for some reason and, you know, got a real big cantilever in it uh, with their laser down there. So that's one thing I don't like about it, but that's the way they make it. And then you can see that cantilever. Everything is shaky now because I had to loosen everything up to make it so that one um, gyro sensor wouldn't trip. There's no adjustments on it or anything. So you just keep loosening up things until that yellow light stops coming on and stopping it. Now to focus it, it's pretty easy. You just uh, put this little piece of, I think it's three millimeters thick pla <coughs> plastic under it, and you drop the uh, you drop it down on there and tighten the knob on the front. And I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna try my first job here, and it's just something. It's a cutting board that I'm gonna do on it bigger. I'm gonna, you know, make it full size. But I'm starting with a small one just to see how it comes out. And it looks good. Um, I, I, I've got it going fully across, so I, I, it'll run for a long time instead of doing individual pieces. You can see there, I wanted to run it and burn it in and stuff and check it. So I did a really good job on the, um, on the initial engraving, and then actually the text came out good. All the, you know, all my settings and everything worked good. That I'm using the same as I use on the D1 now. And then when I started cutting the outsides, when I had problems, everything, it started cutting and then it would just stop. Everything would lock up, the machine would lock up, the, um, I get this notice when I hooked it back up to, um, the, to the light burn. I kept getting this error notice about Gerbil, but the machine would just lock up and you had to reset everything and restart it. And, and I wound up redoing that three times. It just would run for a couple couple inches and then it would lock up and you'd have to reset everything. The machine still thought it was running and stuff. So there's something in the laser that, you know, that's not working right, it looks like. So at that point, you know, after it stopped, I think it be about four or five times, I just gave up on it and um, took the piece out. And you can see uh, it started after... After it would start up again, um, it started uh, making a sooty thing. So then I let it sit for about a little bit over an hour to cool down again. I figured it might have been overheated or something and decided to get a piece of half inch, actually 12 millimeter birch plywood out and try to cut that. But I'm using the, the settings from the same ones that I use on the D1 there. And, um, you know, I wasn't able to cut through the plywood with that, but According to the specs on this, this one should cut through uh, 17 millimeters or something. I speed it up here a little bit. I just ran 100% um, power five times around at 100 uh, millimeters a minute, and I wanted to, you know, see what that would do. And did nothing. Didn't go through or anything. So then I um, decided to. Uh, Try some poplar, 12 millimeter poplar, which is a real soft wood. It should go right through. And I did the same settings on the first run. Then I slowed it down a little bit on the second run. And you can see how red the flame has been. Ever since um, the thing started shutting off, the laser has been kind of a red. It hasn't been a blue beam coming out of it, I noticed. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but I'm getting kind of like a blue sooty beam. You can see just how wide it's trying to cut now. So I did, uh, I did run this, um, I should have shut it down, but I saw it burn in there and I figured, well, let's see what happens, because I know these things can be dangerous. Um, I've never had this happen with another laser, though. Usually it'll just blast right through and, uh, that'll be it. It won't start a fire, but this one here looks like, uh, maybe it's got a little more power or something, I don't know. 
but you know basically uh, this was 12 millimeter poplar which was the softest wood that I had and you can see it actually it's on fire there it didn't it didn't go through it for me um, so I'm not sure what you got to do uh, X tool said you got to run it like 20 20 rounds at a faster speed but, um, it's just not right you can see the width of that line and stuff it's cutting so I did I did have to wet it down to actually put the, the smoke out on the inside of it then I got out a piece of this five millimeter plywood that I was that I used in the X tool and I was able to cut that in one pass no problem with these settings so I, I set this up and um, decided to try it and same thing just a just kind of a sooty wide line and you know it didn't cut it it should have blown right through that so I think there's really something wrong with the laser but I'm not sure so I decided to do five passes with it like that just to see if, you know what it would take to, to cut it and same thing I wound up with a fire and you know you can see there was a there's always it's been a red kind of like a red laser ever since so at this point in time, I um, I gave up. I didn't want to ruin any of my wood trying the projects I had lined up for this. So, um, you know, right now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say uh, I'll let Adam Stack look at it, and take a watch this video, and tell me whether it's me or whether it's a laser. I have no idea, but I'm not, I don't have time to play with it anymore. So you can see I um, it did run good for about an hour. I actually was happy with it. I didn't, you know, I didn't think I was going to have a problem. But I do not like that can lever or how you can adjust that um, that motion sensor in there, or gyro they call it. That's really um, with an overhang like this. That's really I don't like it, but you know it may work for them. And I did, you know, I did contact them, and they said loosen the wheels and belts to get the gyro from shutting down and. You know just keep keep running it around and around so you know that's the answer that i got so far but maybe they'll get a better answer after watching this so anyway it looks like you know it's a fairly nice uh, laser here but it's not one that i really would recommend at this point in time i'll do a follow-up if we get answers thanks for watching please subscribe